Well, I was going to go for a boat ride, but that looks a little concerning. Well, hello. Welcome back. First off, I just want to say thank you to everybody because we're almost at 5,000 subscribers. By the time this video comes out, we might already be there. But uh, I never thought that would ever happen because I'm just doing my job and making videos as I go here. So thanks again for that. And uh, secondly here, we are on a 24 uh, Boston Whaler. And this is a simple job. I'm just checking the batteries here, make sure our motor charges. We might have two dead batteries. This boat's uh, three or four years old. So might be time. It's been sitting a little while. So we're going to check this out. But first, we want to go to a Grady White that had triple 350 VA Yamahas and uh, we had an overheat on one so let's just jump to that so we are on a 366 Grady White it's got triple 350 V8s on it and we have port side overheat so what I'm going to do well let me show you real quick looks like we've collected a stick at the same time here or a log whatever you want to call that so what I've done I've already pulled the other thermostat and checked it it's just like this one it is closed which probably means it's working but we can verify that later I left it out so we are open and what happened is he has an overheat and he's not getting any water from his telltale so there's a couple situations that could happen here but what I'm gonna do is start it give a little throttle and see if we get any water coming out of our hole here fire it up Get our neutral only here. There's a little button on the side you hold, and then the little light should flash at you. We'll give it some throttle. I don't want to get too hot because then I got to work on it. So we got nothing. Nothing coming out of her. We already have water flow. Turn that off. So that's just a little tip for you. If you wanted to, it's two 10 millimeter bolts your thermostat kind of just leave this open and make sure you got water flow here and if you don't then let's pull your gear case and what I'll do is uh, we'll show the gear case when we get this bar out of the water it might be next tomorrow or the next day whatever but uh, we'll add it to this video here so back to you future me well thanks past me we'll uh, get back to you in a second here because I did pull the gear case off that and we'll show you that in a second but first we do have a dead battery here so I'm gonna go to the van I have another one we'll slap it in and we want to make sure we are charging and everything here and uh, make sure none of our fuses are blown, our ACR is working, so we'll, I'll get all that ready here and uh, I'll show you what happened with the water pump in the gear case on the Yamaha, so back to you, past me. All right, we're back on our Grady White here and we're out of the water and I yanked the poor drive off it and we found the problem. Pretty easy to identify here. No pumpy, because we have no pump left. She's completely roached, so. Another thing too to check here, obviously uh, we need a water pump here, but get a complete kit, do the plate, everything. But always check underneath and make sure your housing hasn't melted anywhere because that will also cause problems and overheats and, and worn impellers. And try not to drop your bolts inside the gear case if you don't have to. All right, anyway, toolbox rolling by here. Get a new impeller for it or a new impeller kit. So we replace the plate, all the gaskets, all that fun stuff. Check, double check my housing, make sure I don't need that. This one looks good, but I'm gonna double check it. And uh, we'll talk to the customer about pulling and inspecting our other ones here. And I looked inside of his hole, it's perfectly clean. This boat doesn't live in the water, there's no bottom paint. So usually when you see a rotted midsection, it's because it sits and lives in the water. So you'll have bottom paint. This thing has been sitting in the water for 10 years and it just happens to uh, cause more catastrophe when it comes to salt water and humidity and them sitting in the water. So. Anyway, we'll get this fixed and uh, back to you again, future me. Well, thanks for that later that day, me. Here's our old battery. Here's our new battery. And I got tool hooked to it here so you can see we have 13, 14 volts. So that means our ACR has kicked on and now we are charging our battery here. So both batteries are getting charged. Good there. Started right up, sounds good. We got good charging on our computer here too, showing us the same thing. Uh, everything looks good, just running good, sounds good. So let me get this one all packed up here and uh, talk to the customer real quick. Then we gotta head to a sack store. Gotta take a look at another uh, couple things on that one and we got a breaker to replace or the windlass, no big deal. But while we do that, let me uh, jump to another one. We have a Fisher Panda that has a bad throttle actuator. And I just show you what's going on and a few tips on how to fix it 
before you get a new throttle actuator so you can use a generator if you had to so let's cut to that all right so we are in a 36 Aquila and we have a 5k Fisher Panda here and his throttle arm right here this is the RP it basically controls your RPMs that's your fuel pump more fuel more RPMs and this thing just wants to get 121 and a half volts all the time it doesn't matter what what uh, RPM it runs so it's gonna try its hardest to always have around 120 volts and this actuator right here has went bad so it's basically just idling putting out about 90 volts when it's running and if you want what you can do this is just a tip before you get a new one of these and you want to run your generator you can take a zip tie tie it around your tube here which is just your intake for your air zip tie it actually you gotta fire it up first so you fire it up this thing will idle put a zip tie around this till you get some RPMs out of it and then go check and see where you're at with um, oh, it's stuck so you can tell that's how you know it's bad too it should spring back without wanting to hang up like that you can feel a dead spot in it so yeah you zip tie it and you look at your meter for about 130 volts and you just leave it there because then you can load it up and it will slowly just decrease voltage as it gets a load on it if you go too high with it over 130 or so volts then it wants to overheat because it's creating too much voltage in the generator so you got to be careful there but if you run it around 130 volts it seems to be good that way nope oh, it's bringing back so yeah that's just a tip until you get a new actuator and sometimes they want you to change your board with the actuator because these control each other basically here because this is your boost board so just a little tip for you and uh well back to you future me well thanks last week me we're actually uh sitting here in our parking lot because i was going to go to a sack store but we're going to change gears here and hit the tampa to look at a uh, whaler i got a ford bilge pump to put in it so that's not a big deal but we could be able to get out of the rain and that fisher panda thing we were just talking about they're actually a little bit easier to deal with now i know a lot of people in the past have said i can't get a hold of them i can't get parts all that stuff but their website has changed their phone systems have changed so hopefully they are getting better at trying to respond to people just give it a day or two if you email them or try to call them leave them a message and they should get back to you i've actually just uh was talking to them about that so it took them a day two days they're busy obviously they're like the only one in the country that does any of their fisher panda stuff and there's a lot of them out there so be patient with that and uh just keep going at them if you need to and hopefully they will help you because they have a pretty long warranty and they're usually pretty helpful about stuff so anyway check them out online and they are thinking pompano beach or something like that close to fort lauderdale so anyway let's uh head out here and head to tampa and i'll see you there okay we made it to tampa here and looks like we're getting chased by this storm here it's right above us so we might be getting more rain so i'm going to try to hurry this up but 32 dual council we have the same exact boat next to us here pretty cool we got white motors black motors here so it's just a little bit different setup but basically the same exact thing and we have should be a bilge pump all the way up in here let's take a look well look at that i'm gonna say it doesn't work anymore we got parts floating pumps just sitting down there that's nice so i'm gonna have to put the new pump in and just get it cranking. We'll put it to a battery or something to get this drained out so I can clean it out. So let me get all that done here. Get the pump all that and see if I can beat this rain. It looks like we didn't make it to beat the rain, but I have my stuff right here. I'm hiding in the cabin here. Got the air on, at least the fan on for the air. We can turn on without the air because we're not in the water. There's my new pump. We got all the tools inside that box there trying to keep things dry. And of course, if you look here, we're over here in Tampa, and it is just barely getting us. Well, that's what happens. Oh, that little tiny spot. So I'm gonna wait a little bit, and uh, if I have to, I'm just gonna have to get wet. But in the meantime, I can at least wire my pump up here. We'll uh, get some fittings on it so that I can hook it up and get that compartment draining. You see how full it was. Okay, of course we got people doing yard work next to us, but. Looks like we are in the middle of it being a little bit dry here. I snuck out here, threw the bilge pump in. There's our old one there. And we're letting her drain out now. She's pretty close. Looks like she stopped. Now I can get it down where it needs to go on our bracket there to finish drain the rest out. And I'll take it out and wipe all this out here. 
don't know why people are doing yard work when it's nasty lightning rain out. See if we'll get her to go. There she goes. She's pumping again. I like these low water bilge pumps. They're pretty cool. They they don't leave very much water wherever they're at. They work pretty well. They pumped all that water out in not very long. Only a couple minutes. And that's good for now. Let me clean all this out. Alright, we are cleaned out. And we got our pump in here. We're good. Let's snap it back down on our base here. Alright, there we go. She's home, and of course, one thing I forgot, you see our wiring here and our hose that we gotta tie down so that thing stays there. I don't have zip ties with me, so I'm gonna try to beat the rain here. So I'm gonna run to the van and get some zip ties here, make sure everything is working, put it all back together, check our batteries, all that fun stuff, and uh, call it a day. Hopefully, this rain keeps missing me here and I can finish the job. But as always, I appreciate everybody watching, and I will see you next time. Later. Look at this. It went from 96 to 76 degrees. And now, I lost tire pressure because of it. It's crazy, 20 degrees in 20 minutes.